In this video, we're going to talk about what prefabs are and how you can start using them in your game. In the simplest terms, a prefab is basically just a saved copy of an object that you create in your game, and it allows you to create multiple copies of it. As well, when you change one, you can push that change out to all of them, so you don't have to go through and modify every object individually. Now, where this benefits is, say you make something like a platform in your game, and you use that same platform a hundred times. If you decide you want to make a change to that platform, normally you would have to go and change it on all 100 of them. If we use a prefab, we can modify the prefab and that change is going to happen on all of them. So I'm going to show you some very simple examples here, just using some cubes and spheres. And then I'll show you a more real world example using this building that I have down here. So first thing I'm going to create a cube. So we have this one here. I have it selected. I'm just hitting Control D to duplicate. I'm going to move this off to the side and I'm going to make one more. So now we have these three cubes in our game. They're not related to each other at all. They're three totally separate objects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly create a material here. I'm just going to call this red material. Drag this onto the middle cube. I'm going to set this to be red. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to make a blue material. And then drag this onto the third. Let's change this to blue. Okay, so now we have these three cubes and they have nothing to do with each other. They're separate colors. So if I start changing this white one and I'm going to make one more, I'll make a green material. So let's apply this. And now we have three cubes with three separate colors. So think of this as the scenario I mentioned earlier, where if we have, say these are three different platforms in our game, and what if we wanted to change all of them to be blue? We would have to select this one, change the material, select this one, change the material, and then this one's already blue, so we can leave it as is. Now, if these were prefabs, we could do that all at once to all of them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another cube here. I'm going to make 3D object cube. I'll just drag it somewhere over here so we can see it. Okay, so somewhere around here is good. So now this is just a plain white cube. And we're going to do the same thing as these three cubes except using prefabs now. So the way we make a prefab, all we have to do is click and drag this object in our hierarchy. So that's already in our game and just drag it into the project folder down below. Now you're going to see it makes this new icon. It'll have a picture of the object in it and it'll be the name. So I'm going to rename this to cube prefab. Now what this is, this is basically a copy of this cube that's in our scene, but it's more of a template. So you can almost think of it Think of it kind of like a, an assembly line at a factory. And what it's going to do is always make that same object. So it's like a big mold. We could almost think of it kind of like a mold in a automobile factory. So say if they were making a part for your car, um, say, let's just say it's a wheel. Now every wheel they make for this car is going to be the same. So what we can do is let's actually delete this cube out of our scene. Now we don't have it and let's drag this prefab in. I'm just going to drag it over here. And then I'm going to drag another copy in. It doesn't matter where they're placed. They can be anywhere in your game. So now I have three of them. And the way you know these are prefabs, if we look in our hierarchy, you can see they have the blue text now. That means it's a prefab. Now, when we select them, we're going to have some different options up here. You can see we have a prefab and it gives a few things. It shows override, select and open. We'll talk about those in a moment here. But the first thing I want to show you is this cube prefab object we have here, this actual prefab. If we want, we can double click on this and it's going to open up in our scene. This is a new window. This is called prefab edit mode. And you can look, you can see the name of the prefab here. We have this little arrow. 
This is going to take us back to our normal scene. So that exits prefab mode. So let's go back into it, double click it here again. And now in this area, it's just like when we're working on a scene in our game, we can make all of our changes, except we're only changing what's inside this prefab. So we can do whatever we want here. We could drag on a green material so we can make this cube green. And now if we exit out, let's click this little arrow. You can see all of the other copies of that prefab. These are what's called an instance of the prefab. They're going to get the changes. The way I would think of this is when we use this prefab down below, it creates what's called an instance of that prefab. So it's just a copy of that prefab, but they have a link. So in my, my description earlier where I said about an automobile factory making wheels, you can almost kind of think of this like the factory saying, you know what, I wanna change that wheel design and they can do a recall on all the wheels that were made using that design and they can bring them all back in, modify the change, and then send them back out. It's not the exact same thing, but it kind of gives you an idea of how this works. And this goes for anything in our prefab. So let's open this prefab again. What if we wanted this prefab to be two cubes? So let's select our cube model. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to move it over here. And you know what, I'm gonna just kind of move it up on top of this cube. Now I'm gonna put a blue material on it. So now it's floating just above it. If we back out here now, you can see all of our instances of that prefab now have that shape. So I hope that starts to show you how powerful this is. When you're making a big game, you can make a prefab of your objects, your your buildings, your players, your enemies. And then as you get more progressed in your game development, you can start creating these during the game runtime and make procedurally made games. So if you think of a game, say the genre Endless Runner, where the game literally goes on forever and it just keeps recreating parts of the level, that's gonna be using prefabs where it keeps loading them in automatically. So instead of us dragging and dropping the prefabs like this, you're just going to create them from code. So we talked about the, the prefab edit mode down here that we can go in and edit it. Another way you can modify prefabs is if we select our first prefab here. Notice we have this little arrow here. So if we click that, that will open up into prefab edit mode. So that's another way you can do it. But let's back out of this. And if we want to start just modifying this prefab. So say I want to take the bottom square here. I'm going to make the whole thing bigger. And then the top one, I'm going to make very small. And just maybe I'll move it down. I'll put it inside. So we kind of have this little button. So now I modified this prefab and you can see it didn't change the others because this is an instance of the prefab. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a, an object that was made from the mold of the prefab. It's not the actual prefab itself, which is down here. So if I was to open this one, see it's still normal. So we can change each prefab copy, or again, it's called an instance. If we modify those in our game, it's not gonna change the other ones that are of the same prefab. But what if we wanted to make this change? So if we did that using prefab edit mode like we did before, we would have to kind of look at it, see what settings we changed, go into this one, try to mimic them. You don't have to actually do that. If we select the object here, that's what these menus are for here. So you can see this one, it says overrides. Now what an override is, is what you changed on this object from its original prefab. So if we click this little down arrow, you can see I changed the transform, which means I scaled it to a different size on both objects. Now we have two options here. So it says revert all overrides. What this is going to do is remove all these overrides I did and change it back into what it originally was from the prefab. So if I click revert all, see it goes right back. 
I'm just going to hit Control Z to undo that. Now this time, if I click this, and if I wanted to apply all, what this is going to do is this is going to apply these changes to the prefab down here. So what this means is this one is going to apply it to the prefab, which then pushes it out to all the others. So if I click apply all, now you can see all of them changed. Now there's two other options here. I just want to show you these quick as well. So if we use select, what this is going to do is actually select the prefab that we made it from, which is this one here. So right now it doesn't look too beneficial, but if you have a really big project and you possibly have hundreds, possibly even thousands of prefabs in your game, sometimes trying to find the right one can be very tricky. So if you just select it here, hit select, it's going to bring you to the prefab in the project folder. And then the other option here, if we click open, that's going to do the same as clicking that little arrow and it's going to go into prefab edit mode. But you can see on this one, we're actually editing right in the scene. So you can see the other objects, they're just dimmed out. So if we back out of that, but if we actually double click the prefab itself, that goes right into the prefab. So we don't see the scene or anything here. So they all have different uses and you're going to learn them as you progress and as you get better with your game, what's better and when you should use those. Now, a quick thing I'm going to show you, I hope just from seeing this, you start to see different ideas you can use on your own for a game. But I'm going to show you something here just to demonstrate. So I'm going to delete all of these. So now I'm going to show you a bit of a real world situation here. So say if you were making a game sort of like Grand Theft Auto and you're making a whole city and designing it and you don't actually have any of the art or the assets yet. What you usually want to do is use either free primitive ones you find online or you can just use the shapes built into Unity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty object. I'm just going to call this building. I'm going to reset it to zero here. So we have nothing on it. It's just an empty game object. I'm going to drag it in to my project folder and make it a prefab, but it's still empty. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it. So double click. And now we're in prefab edit mode. So like I mentioned, we can start building stuff on the side here. So I can right click 3D object cube. So I'm just going to call this model. So this, this could be our 3D model of a building. I'm going to reset its position here. So it's right in the center of the prefab. And I did a bit of math earlier. The, the model I have 10 by 16 by 10. And for its Y position, I'm just going to move it up. So it's just kind of sitting on the ground at eight. So this will vary depending on what you want for your game. So you just need to find the size. You set it in here. Now we have this prefab. So if I drag this into our game, we can drag it in a few times. Oh, I accidentally dragged it in twice, but you know what? That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate it a few times. I'm just going to move it over here. So say this is a game that we're starting to make a city of. What's going to happen is when it comes time that you, you find out this game is fun and it's worth making, you're now going to find either an artist to hire and make buildings or go out and get some assets. And you'll just want to tell them what size you want for all of this. So once you get that model, instead of having to go in and manually replace everything in your city with the models that somebody creates for you, if they have the size, all you have to do is come in and replace it. So we have, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five buildings. So we have five different buildings. We would have to go and do this for every single one of them if it wasn't for prefabs. But with prefabs, I can go into this building one, double click, and we have model here. So we could either change this or we can just make another one under building. So I'm going to drag in this building model that I have as a child. And now you can see they're both on top of each other. So I could either delete the original cube, or in this case, I'm just going to disable it. And now we have a building here. So if I exit out, you can see we now have a building in each one. 
and notice it's rotated the wrong way. So if we look at it, we can determine it's the green arrow or the green line here. So if we start moving that, look in the inspector, we can see it's on the Y. So what we need to do is go into our prefab. And if we look at it here, you can see it's going on the positive value of Y. So let's go into our prefab. Let's go to rotation Y. Make sure we're on the, the model. And let's set it to 90. And there, we changed all of those models. And then if we need to change them one by one, say this one was on the corner of the block and it needs to face the other direction. We can just manually change this one. Okay, so that's some of the beginner benefits of using prefabs. This goes very much further in depth. There's a lot that you can do with them. I'm gonna make some additional videos on two other topics that I wanna start on, which is prefab variants and nested prefabs. So I'm not gonna get into those in this video because it's already getting a bit long, but I'll talk about those in the next one.